Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Welcome to another episode of the Tech Preacher Podcast. That's what I'm talking about. Happy holidays to you guys. Happy 4th of July. Man, you know, when we reflect on things like 4th of July holidays and, and stuff like that, one of the things I think about is how I became a content creator. Uh, it's been it's been nine years, right, as a content creator. And I want to reflect and talk about some things on this podcast about me being a content creator for so long. Because I think now is the time as I, in my 10th year, going into my 10th year, I think it's time for me to reflect and talk about some of the the battles that I've had throughout the years because this may help someone. And look, these podcasts is designed to help people because the decision that I've made in the past, you shouldn't make the same mistakes that I've made, right? So back in 2015, I started my YouTube channel and I started becoming a content creator. And when I started being a content creator, I had this thought process of if I follow everybody else if i do the same things as the bigger content creators then i will be successful because one of the things that we always do most people is we look at numbers right we go across youtube and we look at the numbers and if the numbers look so good one of the things we think about is wow if i do the same thing if i film the same way if i uh, review the same product. If I fake it, right? If I if I do that, then I'm going to be big. Well, it doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. And when I first started, uh, you know, becoming a content creator, I did not know the do's and don'ts. I didn't know, I did not know the YouTube algorithm. I didn't know the thumbnails and tags and titles and all that stuff like that. Because 15 years ago, they didn't have all that type of stuff, right? I mean, they just didn't have all that type of stuff. And listen, I reached out to other content creators for assistance, for help. And unfortunately, that didn't help because a lot of them didn't, didn't care to talk to me. A lot of them give you this false narrative. You know, when you watch the, the YouTube gurus online, they tell you, just keep posting and, and just posting and posting quantity and you know just just do what you believe that you want to do it and your followers will come and you're gonna be this type of person and all that stuff like that listen that was a false narrative right to me it was a false narrative now again i started my youtube channel way back in the day and so here's what i learned over the years of being a content creator um the first five years i believe i totally flunked out so i this is one of the reasons why when i be talking about things like i believe i'm at my beginning stages i believe that what i'm doing now is more organized more unique because i failed the first five or so years right i failed with a false narrative i failed at posting videos without structure i failed without thinking about what i wanted to do i failed at a lot of things back when i first started Everything that I've done here as a content creator has almost been self-taught. Uh, and a lot of people were, well, you know, why, what happened? Why you didn't seek out help? And I was like, I did. And it just didn't work. Um, and I feel comfortable now than I did back then. So when I first started back in 2015, Again, I had this false narrative that you just keep posting and everything will be okay. Just keep posting, posting, posting. And I didn't have no structure again. I didn't have no balance. I didn't have no type of style. I didn't, you know, I mean, it was this me. Po and then I was basically, you know, turning on the camera, trying to make these videos. And that was back then when, you know, when products and services was being released, I was trying my best to be the first at it. I was just horribly trying my best to drop videos when products and services first come out. It was it was frustrating. It was depressing. Now, I made a video and I think I talked about this on my one of my podcasts that I was at the point of quitting. Right. I, I thought about quitting. 
because I, well, I looked at the numbers. It just wasn't no. I mean, I wasn't getting no. Nobody was watching me, man. Like, I feel that like, man, I'm looking at this. These numbers are horrible, and I feel that I was a failure, right? Every time I look at the numbers, man, I felt that I was a failure. Every time I, you know, drop a video and I got two views on it, I said to myself, well, well, this is a fantastic video. Why nobody watched it? Again, I didn't know the YouTube algorithm. I didn't know how YouTube worked. I didn't know it, anything about being a content creator. I, I, everything that I was uh, watching online was all false to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? But at that time, I believed in that. Um, and so as I post and I post and I look at my numbers and I failed and I was, it was, then I went back and I post again and I kept making videos over and over and over and over. I kept making videos over and I just posted. It was nothing happening for me. So what did I do? I started getting, being desperate, right? I started doing these stupid cuckoo videos and, uh, you know, things was, ah, my God, it was. I was overworking myself. I was out there doing all these camera reviews and out there, you know, one, two, three a.m. in the morning, just just out there trying to do what I got to do. And it, some of it worked. Don't get me wrong. You know, I started getting traction on some stuff. And one of the reasons why is because I started doing things that nobody else would do, right? I had the new product in hand. I had the older product in hand. So I started doing all kinds of things, such as out 3 a.m. in the morning trying to film. Uh, I try to do all kinds of, and listen, man, at, at some point of me out filming 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, 1 a.m. in the morning, and try to come back to the house and uh, to the studio and try to edit it, try to post it so fast, right? I stayed up all night, didn't get no sleep. Uh, it became stressful. Battery tests, oh my God, battery tests. Battery tests almost ended me in the hospital right uh, and this is one of the reasons why I stopped doing battery tests I say man you know because nobody was doing battery tests right everybody was just kind of letting you know hey this is my battery stats so what I used to do with battery tests was insane I started a battery test early during the day right this say 2 o'clock I start the battery test. Now, I was playing uh, videos in a loop, right? Videos in a loop. And I had all these devices sitting on the table with the camera and I'm just filming, filming, filming. But here's the catch. I had to watch all the devices. So if, you know, I just want to make sure that the, um, uh, the brightness level was correct. I want to make sure that they didn't go into standby mode. I want to make sure that the video was playing. I want to make sure there's no hiccup, no stuttering. Then I wanted to time each device going out when they run out of battery life. And what I did was every three hours, maybe every two hours or so, I was giving commentary. But what I found out was those devices goes into a different mode when just watching videos if you're watching videos your device is not using the full complement of its processors it is not using a lot so it, it so watching movies or watching videos on a device you would get very good uh you know screen on time i didn't know that so i am sitting up here for 14 hours right straight trying to sit up here and watch me do myself do a battery test right and after i finished the battery test i'm doing commentary at the end after like 12 14 16 hours of watching devices and my body was just so exhausted i was so tired and if you watch those videos right at the end you guys hear my voice i did not sleep and then after i gathered up all the files from the camera and put it in my video editing software. I edited it and I posted it instantly. That means that it was a 20 plus hour day for me. And I've done that so many times. And not only that, but I was so exhausted. I was so tired. I was so frustrated. Um, and I knew that 
if I don't stop doing this, then I, my body just can't handle that. And so battery test was something that brought me almost to the brink of no return. Because even though I was doing these 20 hour battery tests and trying to post it as fast as I can, again, no structure. I didn't have no balance. I didn't know what to, how to do the tags. I didn't know how to do the thumbnails. I didn't know how to do the titles. So some of those battery tests didn't, didn't even do anything. And that was the most frustrating thing for me because I dropped this video and I'm looking at 10 views on it. After I literally spent 20 plus hours making a video, dropping a video, then I'm looking at the, uh, and uh, my, my eyes all of a sudden focus on the algorithm, not the, I'm sorry, not the algorithm, but my eyes focus on my analytics. After I dropped the video, I'm looking at my analytics like this, and I'm looking at nobody watching. I'm looking at no comments coming in. I'm looking at, and I'm saying to myself, oh my God, I can't believe that I sit up here for 20 plus hours dropping a video and it didn't do anything. It fell flat. Most of them fell flat. And yeah, they started catching on after a while, but that brought me to the brink of no return. So over the years, as me failing, failure after failure after failure, me thinking about giving all this stuff up, one thing that I miss. One thing that I missed by doing everything except this one thing, making videos for the people, being about the people, thinking about my health, thinking about a lot of different things, being structured, have a balance, learn a little bit about being a content creator. Instead of posting quantity, how about posting quality, right? And so after about five years of me trying to learn myself, learn my ways, learn this and learn that. Listen, you know, I looked at from 2015 to maybe 2019 or maybe 2020. Uh, I think my YouTube channel grew maybe 4,000 subscribers, right? In four years, right? Four or five years, I, I think I gained like you know, four to five. I mean, I think I was under 10,000 subscribers, if I'm not mistaken, right? Then once I started changing stuff, started, you know, doing things different, started changing my structure a little bit, uh, then things started working great for me. You know, I changed my structure. I changed things that, I, that, that needed to be done. I started learning how to run you know, Easy Computer Solutions, a.k.a. the Tech Preacher, as a foundation, right? In instead of just posting this crap, right? Um, spending tons of money to be first. And by the way, I, I used to do that. And that was horrible, right? This is how device came out. And I knew that I had a connect that will give me that device. But they wanted a little under the table money. They wanted something... Uh, you know, hey, if you want me to give you this device, if you want this device for review, if you want this device, you know, you got to, you know, take care of under the table. So here I am thinking that if I don't do this, if I don't be first, then I'm already behind the eight ball, then I'm going to fail at uh, trying to capture the views. And so spending tons of money unnecessarily, um, and that just, I had to make a change. Either two things was going to happen here, right? Either I was going to quit this stuff all together and then enjoy my tech and enjoy my life, right? Or change the focus and direction of how I need to run my YouTube channel and being a content creator, period. So I went with option two. I changed. So I would tell you that my new beginning my new uh, fate on me being a content creator all started probably in 2020, um, you know, going into 2021. That's when I started getting a fundamental change on a lot of things that I do. I say this, this, I say this because I want y'all guys to know my history. I want y'all guys to know the struggle. I want y'all guys to know how I basically went from 
you know, 2015 to like 2020, this unbalanced, unstructured, dropping crap videos, trying to chase the algorithm that I didn't understand, didn't know nothing about tags and titles, didn't know nothing about this, didn't know nothing about the competition, didn't sit up there being frustrated watching my analytics. This absolutely a mess, right? For five years, a lot of people, my God, Listen, when we talk about five years, I used to drop so much content, got hundreds of videos, hundreds of them, right? And I think I'm right at, today I think I'm at 2,500 videos right now. Just tons and tons of videos. Um, and uh, they most of them was worthless. Most of them was bad. Most of them didn't have no structure. Some, some of them, the, the audio quality was beyond no return, right? Some videos I go back and I watch, I wouldn't watch it. You can't hear it. The, the, the sound quality was terrible. The video quality was terrible. I was shooting with crappy smartphones. I was, I was at a point of my whole channel from 2015 to 2020 was a mess. Now listen, some of my saving grace, right, was my live streams. That built up a structure of me communicating with my audience. Wine Wednesday, bringing the ladies on. I wanted to have a vision of ladies because ladies was not celebrated on YouTube. So I came up with Wine Wednesday. But I used to film, uh, I used to do live streams by myself. And I used to do three live streams a week. It was horrible, man. Like I used to do a live stream on Monday. I used to do a live stream on Wednesdays and I used to do a live stream on Saturdays. And I used to sit up here day in and day out doing these live streams when no one was watching, right? I used to sit up there and do a Wednesday stream. Literally two people was watching. And I think I was one of the person who was watching because I had my phone sitting right here with the live stream on. So I used to have one person watch me on the live stream and I did that for years. Not only that, but when I used to do my Monday stream, I used to do Monday morning hangover, and I might have had two to three people on there watching me. And I used to do that for years. So I knew that it was not working. I can sit up there and I can, I'm looking at the numbers, I'm looking at it, it just wasn't working. No structure, no balance, nothing. So I tell you that I had to make a change. I needed to make a change. Either that I was go quit. And I didn't want to quit because my inspiration and my drive, I am not a quitter. Think about it. I, I don't quit at nothing. I love the challenge. And I had to challenge myself. I had to look myself in the mirror. I had to do what I had to do to make my changes accordingly. Now, we're in 2024. And now, what, what do I have right now? I have a balanced, structured channel. I know exactly the path that I want to take. I'm happier, comfortable, relaxed. I feel good. Um, I'm not frustrated. I don't feel rushed. I feel that it, it it's a 360 degree difference from 2015 to from 2020, 2015 to 2020, and from 2021 to 2024. This is why I talk about I'm at my beginning stages. So I feel that I'm only three years in, four years in. That's it. Even though technically I've started my YouTube channel and I started being a content creator in 2015. But I feel today that I'm only about four years in. That means that if I'm four years in, I've accomplished a lot in four years. Right. I went from a, a YouTube channel that was about 10,000, less than 10,000 subscribers. And I got it all the way up to almost 67,000, almost 70,000 subscribers. Right. Uh, I'm at over 20 million views total. Right. Um, I have a balanced structure. I, I, I feel that the way I do things now it's totally different from what I've done things in the past. And so today I feel better. Now, let's make sure we understand something here, right? I'm still 
trying to figure things out. I'm, I may make a change. I might change some things. I might look at what I'm doing today may not be working. So that means that I got to make changes for the future. I'm not going to be complacent. I'm not going to just sit up and say, okay, so this method that I'm doing right now is working. Let me stick with it forever. No, that doesn't work. I ch I'm going to change with times. If something is not working of what I'm doing today, I will change it for the future. And that's what you need to do. Because listen, things that I do today is, is totally different from what I did from 2015 to 20, you know, uh, 2020 and stuff like that. I found myself with a fair and balanced, uh, a work ethic that I really appreciate and I love, right? I interact with my community every day. I listen to them. I read my comments. I want to move forward. And I don't get frustrated on a whole lot of different things. So what I want to dedicate this podcast is that nine years in, I had to make changes and I was doomed, y'all. I was, I was a failure. I felt that, you know, if I didn't make a change, that I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. I needed to make a change for my health, for myself, and for me being a content creator to try to be successful on this platform. In order for me to do that, I had to make these huge changes. I had to. I had to. All right. Hopefully you guys get value out what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is this. First of all, if you go start being a content creator, right? I, I, I want y'all guys to listen to my battles because you shouldn't have to go through the battles that I've been through. Times have changed. I would tell you that being a content creator, you can't do it by yourself. You have to reach out to, to a community of people a community of trusted people that that that's on the same page and path as you. Not the backstabbers, not the fake and phony people. I'm talking about people that's on the same path as you, that has a focus like you have a focus. Help you when you down. You help them when they down. They give you key pointers. You give them key pointers. They watch your videos. You watch their videos you give them constructive criticism they give you constructive criticism you see how that works right because if you have people on your side first of all you need people to not be a yes person I, listen i don't want people to oh, oh yeah it's great Eric. It's just a fantastic video no i want people to say yes it was a great video but you know you could have changed this uh, or maybe you could have cut that part out or you could have done this. And those things to me, I I feel that it's necessary, right? Uh, it, all my videos are perfect. No. Can it be different? Yes. Right. Some things can be structured different. Some things can happen different. But if if I look at the way I was from 2015 to maybe 2021, from 2021 to 2024, you see a total dip difference in the total change in how I structure and how I do things here. And that is called growth. That is called leveling up. That is called stability. That is called a foundation. To me, I didn't have a foundation. Now I have a foundation. That's what you need. I would tell you that you have to Sit back and think about what you want to be, what you want to bring to the platform, what you want to uh, bring to the table, right? And so that's the key to me of why I had to make the changes, why I did what I did. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Listen, man, happy holidays to y'all. Y'all have a fantastic weekend. This is Eric the Tech Preacher. Hope y'all get value and enjoy what I'm saying today. Because what I'm talking about is deep, baby. And it, it goes deeper than that. But I want to, to have this podcast so y'all guys can hear my stories. And I'm going to continue to tell my stories. I believe my stories is, is, is important. Because what, you, what do you guys see? You see the videos. You see me all happy-go-lucky sometimes. 
but how did I get to that point, right? And that's the most important part about all of this. How do I get to that point? That's what I'm talking about. This is Eric. See you guys next week. Woo! Another episode of the Tech Preacher Podcast, baby. I'm out.